Hey, there we are. Look at us. <clears throat> we're, we're here. We're here. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you all to Joseph Drest. <laughs> so I like, I like the uh, one comment already in the uh, chat that this the description way. for this was, uh, what will bring Joseph and Paul together on your stream? despite social distancing so there you, there you go. this is gonna be uh, i'm i'm not kidding when i say buckled up because anytime you and i stream together something something it's chaos is what it it's is chaos. Chaos. It's chaos. It's chaos it's been too many times so welcome everybody we're excited to have you here be a part of the stream uh we're looking forward to show you something that him and i were kind of you know joseph and i talk a lot every day on a regular basis and we kind of wanted to have a little fun here with this stream so we wanted to do like a little challenge uh, to ourselves and seeing about starting with then going into ZBrush Core Mini again and seeing what can we do in ZBrush Core to maybe to have some fun here and doing some little cute creature kind of characters. And I think it's a great, I, I know for me too, it's a great practice because you're just, you're limited to just sculpting, right? And you're just focused on creating a piece. So it's, it's fun to do this. Uh, yeah, and that's, so. that's the, yeah, that's what I've been doing. We've been doing a lot of this kind of stuff where it, they used to be like, what is it? Lunch crunches was uh, yeah. started, Danny Williams, yeah. a while back. Yeah. And so it's kind of similar to that kind of process, like getting in and then starting something. And then one thing really nice about uh, Core Mini is you can share the files back and forth. And so we're going to start there and see where it goes. Yeah, yeah. We're going to, I know you want to make like a, a, a dragon. I think you're going with a dragon, right? Yeah, some sort of dragon. I've already, so we did talk about this a little bit earlier. So I, I've uh, pre planned. I don't know if Paul's done this or not, but. I'm, I'm hoping to get ahead of him here. And uh... well, you are <laughs> you are faster than me in many cases. In many many. This is why I'm going to do kind of like a snail because <laughs> you're just so much quicker than me. All right, uh, give us a shout out in chat. Um, you can see us on the screen here. Just letting everyone kind of trickle in here as well. I've got kind of this like aura around me today. Look, I can go into the light. Don't go uh, into the light. Oh, you too do. Far. You do have yeah, like, aura if I go this way, it's like, ah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> and Joseph, and Joseph, we dressed. Okay. Yep. All right. So we got Kyle helping us out today. He's going to be doing some switching back and forth here. So we're going to get him to start off. And we're going to hop over to uh, Mini here. So if you guys haven't ever used ZBrush Core Mini, it's our free version of uh, ZBrush here, and it's made intentionally to get people into ZBrush. So I know with this whole uh, pandemic thing, we've had a lot of people that are looking for stuff to do. They have time on their hands, uh, things like that. And so with Core Mini, um, we definitely wanted to kind of hit those avenues. And one thing really nice, as Paul mentioned, is that you're kind of limited to the sculpting stuff. So I've been doing this a lot just for like sketching. I think it's a, it's so, a good practice. Right? It's just... Yeah, because it's you're not... You're limited to the amount of tools you have, but you can still do a lot of things and you just can kind of see things for what they are. Like think of it almost like just like clay sculpting. Like you only have six tools over here that you can use. You got a few materials you can switch through them, um, but it gets you to the feeling of using, you know, digital sculpting and then you can at least try it out. And so that's one of the main things we wanted to do with, when we made Core Mini was to kind of get people to experience the sculpting process. Now, as Paul mentioned, we we're going through and doing kind of these little creatures. So I already kind of pre-thought uh, what I was going to do. And so what I'm going to end up uh, working on here is, so I want to do a little dragon. You're a and planner. So with, <laughs> I planned ahead. And so I want to do a little dragon. And I was thinking that, like, I went through, like, some ideas, like standard dragons. And then as I was messing with stuff or kind of thinking ideas, I thought about the, you know, the, Axolotl, which is this little kind of uh, salamander type creature, also a kind of Pokemon. Axel, who? You're going to make me say it again and mispronounce yes, it. Yes, I do. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm say it again. So, Axolotl. Um, and uh, so they look like these little cool little creatures. And so I was thinking, like, something like this, I'm not going to model this exactly, but just kind of like an inspiration uh, for where I'm kind of going with this. So, sculpting, you know, a little dragon that has come of these kind of features, like the things that are growing off his head there to capture the oxygen. Like those are like really cool kind of design elements. Also the coloring I like a lot. So using those kind of two things um, to play around with. So there's that's good, that's where I'm going. Wait, there's a good question coming in right now. Someone was asking about how much struggle for making perfect anatomy model. Me personally, I think struggle is part of the learning. I think you will struggle a lot. But then that's how, I, for me, I think learning is fail failure a little bit. Like you fail to figure something out. 
and then you're, you're struggling and then you have an aha moment. You're like, oh, I see that. And I, I think for me, for anatomy, I don't know about you, Dress, I try to simplify it as much as I can and don't get consumed with, oh, what is the name of every single muscle? Where is every insertion origin point? It's really about um, like looking at bulkiness, like a biceps made of may, pretty much two muscles for the most part, right? So then that's what I focus on is just landing those two muscles, the triceps made of three, hence tricep, bicep. And I, I think that helped me with my anatomy as a sculptor and as I started going. I don't know, what about you? And I think there's two schools of thought kind of there. Like you can go 100% like the straight um, kind of anatomy scientific approach where you build up from the internal organs, the internal bones, the internal muscle structures, and then define your sketch that way. And then there's the other school, which kind of looks on the kind of outward appearance of the shapes and the forms. So you're looking at the shapes and the forms from, you know, the uh, outer appearance. Like you, you should definitely have a, uh, understanding of how they work internally, but you know, some of those internal structures, you don't really transfer over to the external process. So it's kind of a back and forth between those, but I think the key thing for doing anything is repetition. Um, that's going to oh, yeah. be your biggest thing. The, the more you do, the better you're going to get. And so if you guys have been watching any of the, uh, ZBrush masters streams last night uh, was awesome. Yeah. And then a lot of them will just, I mean, anybody that we've had on ZBrush masters, that's what they do. They sculpt. Like you're looking at people that sculpt inside a ZBrush or with clay and then also use ZBrush and they're doing it at least 10 hours a day. And so you're looking at, you know, if that's their entire week, they're up to 70 hours sculpting. And so you can sculpt, if you sculpt it for 70 hours a day, there's no way you're not going to get good at it. Um, so it's one of those kind of things too. It's definitely just, you know, you got to keep doing I think too, as someone, obviously, I'm, I'm assuming this is kind of someone that's a beginner um, as well. Maybe you're just trying to figure out, don't be afraid for mistakes. Don't be afraid to mess up. And I find, uh, I like this, the phrase mucking the sculpt or dirtying the sculpt. When you, you're at a point sculpting wise, I think when you're like, oh man, I just can't get this. And I've been working on this for hours. That's the point you need to stop. You need to either A, walk away, go watch a movie or B, start over again. Because you're you're in this loop and your eye artistically can't see what's wrong, so you need you need to get a step away from it. Either step away from the model, come back later, or just start again. And you guys can't be afraid to start. I can't tell you how many times I've started over on stuff, or like I put in hours in something, and then I start looking at it later, and I'm like, this actually stinks. I'm like, and I'll start all over again. And I'm telling you, there's not one time that it's not better. It's always better, always because you've already gone through a learning process. And I think this is the kind of thing I like about mini now. And I think when Joseph were doing these challenges, like he was talking about, it's really forcing me to go back and really just, let me just focus on straight up sculpting. Like if you guys, Raphael Crescetti was with me last night for one of our ZBrush masters. And guys, he just straight up sculpts. Like he doesn't even use a lot of the features necessarily in ZBrush. He's just raw. I'm just going to sculpt, man. Like someone asked him to do like a rope. How did you do the rope? Like he didn't do anything like an insert mesh brush on it. He literally just grabbed a shape and then sculpted it and then just duplicated, 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 and then used um, the transpose to, in order to just m move it. And I think that's another great example um, to look at for doing this. Yeah, that's way, definitely. Yeah, go ahead. And yeah, that's definitely a thing too. Like you'll see a lot of these guys too and gals that we found on uh, ZBrush Masters. Um, you can just see like their craft come out through. Like sometimes they use, you know, just very few tools, sometimes use a lot of tools, but it's, you know, just their raw talent of art, uh, being able to do the art and everything just comes through so vibrantly. Um, raw talent. talent. Much like my raw talent right now is just, just oozing from Zero Star <laughs> right now. Just, just <laughs> oozing. I kind of like this. You can experiment. I, I, again, I would encourage you all, even for those of you watching maybe or, uh, full ZBrush users, you, know, you should download me and just do some exercises just in Mini. Obviously, this is using Sculptress Pro in Mini, right? So you have this in ZBrush and you have this in ZBrush Core. Um, and I, I, sometimes these little exercises are really good good for you to really hone, some, like Joseph was even saying, honing some of those skills and just doing the, the work, right? That's, that's most of it is doing that, right? Just making it happen. Making it, Making look it happen. 
but we've got some people chiming in. They like to use the move brush, like to mm -hmm. literally fix. My favorite way to fix any models is undo, 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 <laughs> undo, undo. undo. <laughs> it's the best way for me to fix my stuff. <laughs> you like that one? There you yeah, go. I do like that one. That was a good one. That was a good one. That. Go ahead. That, I just came out with that one right there on the whim, right there. It's. I told you that's how dress and I kind of work, man. It's, <laughs> undo, like, undo, undo. Things just happen, right? Uh, so I snake... you, I'm doing a snail, right? So you're doing the the dragon. So speaking of move brush, I really I, that is definitely one of my favorite brushes. And again, going to that, I don't think you need. And honestly, I'm doing and watching this and seeing what artists have done for the 15 plus years that I've been in the community. Um, Guys, it's like just a couple brushes can get you so far, right? And right now, like everything I've done is literally with just the slash brush and the snake hook and then some move brush now, right? So really, I'm switching between three brushes right now inside of core, right? Oh, that looks funny. Yeah, I'm going to go a little smaller. At least uh, Yeah, and then I think a nice thing for, for Sculptures Pro, some of you probably know this trick, when you're smoothing, Right, you could if you guys smooth down, you can separate things like I just did right there. Um, but if you smooth and then let go of your shift key, see it kind of inflates instead. Now I'm inflating because maybe I want to put some eyes in there, right? So again, shift key, right, will smooth. But if you let go of the shift key, it'll start to actually be, and because it's Sculptures Pro, start inflating things, right? So again, you can do this many ways. So shift key and it's going all the way in will separate things. In essence, I could delete what I just did right there. Like I said, with best way to finish my uh, undo. undo, 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 undo. So I'm just gonna make mine kind of cartoony, different looking guy. Should we make him be happy? He wants to have a smile. I was gonna do happy, but you can put a smile on that face. Let's make him have a really big smile. Yeah, grin it up. He's going to grin it. Yeah. He's having a, a good old time now in this stream. So <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, I, what we're talking about, I think, is just really general information for all of us, right? I don't think you ever stop learning, personally. I, even just, you know, doing these, these masters, it's just great seeing how people work and seeing the different ways. I think there's, there's so many ways to do things wow you're gotten really far all of a sudden what what you're you're that quick huh i'm just uh using snake cook over here i don't know what yeah. you're doing uh, I don't, whatever so uh to your question no you can't record a time lapse and um core mini there's no video ability in mini we wanted to kind of keep it just like kind of what joseph and i are talking about let's just get right down to the raw bat grasp of just sculpting again and like let's make this happen <clears throat> Gee, I like just keep pressing undo and you'll get a sphere, or as I like <laughs> to say, the Death Star. So that's always a fun one to say. Uh, would you recommend starting up sculpting, uh, sculpting real creatures before moving on imaginary creature monsters? I think that's a good. That's a good question. Um, I think it's whatever you what keeps yeah. you entertained. I think it's. Yeah, I don't think it's like one way or the other. I mean, if you're interested in sculpting, say like imaginary creatures, sculpt them. It's gonna. I mean, you're going to probably use real creatures as reference as you're doing it as like oh, 100%. you guys earlier. A hundred percent. When I was doing my gremlin, I was grabbing like alligators and crocodiles so I could see how their skin would be, right? Something like that. You know, an elephant is another really good animal reference. Um, I think for like watching like an animal where you maybe or a creature you want to put a lot of skin folds with like small wrinkles. That's one of my go-to animals actually for me. Um, to use for referencing, but like uh, like I was streaming my gremlin, I was looking at a lot of crocodile and alligator stuff. Like, just, I, so I don't think there's a, there's a no wrong to that. I would say crocodiles, crocodile, alligator, and crocodiles. What is the difference, really? Right, and alligator. Have their jaw opens, isn't it? The that and uh, I like alligators uh, are different size and different habitats compared to a crocodile, right? You know, if you talk like crocodiles in Africa, they're they're beasts. They're massive. So, and you will see there's some subtle differences between them. 
for sure. So it's, I would encourage you to look at things like, you know, there's so many things in nature too that's just crazy that you'll find that's like, what the heck is this thing? How did and, that happen? Yep. Yeah. Like, where did this evolve from? Wasn't and it you, all the uh, all the dragon scales for say like uh, Game of Thrones and stuff? Were all like turtles or reference from turtles and things like that too, right? Yeah, Dan. When yeah, he Dan was at the summit and he was showing how he did all that. That was pretty awesome. Like he used a lot of imagery to drive what he was trying to make for sure. So how how are you how are you feeling here? My, I'm I'm coming along here with this now. I'm feeling good. So see, we're talking and having some fun here, and you can see just how far you can get uh, just inside a mini here, just sculpting up some things and making some changes, right? So it's a lot of fun. Uh, I, I think I'm, I think I'm getting where I want to be here. What do you mean? What do you want? What do you want to do? Oh, like, how about this? Let's, let's share these files. All right. So obviously in, in mini, we have the ability to share a file with you guys through a, our 3D imaging GIF and PNG. So let's let's go ahead and actually, let me show you guys how to do that because I think that's an important thing here. So <clears throat> there's my wonderful, I'm gonna give this to you guys, by all means, make it better. <laughs> make you, it want me to, you want me to share this is what you're saying. Yeah, I want you to share this. You know, be strong, be bold in your sculpting abilities, okay? Be there, <laughs> all right? So, so I'm sharing it out to you all so you can make it better. So we're just, I'm gonna just come here to my save. I'm gonna save this out. So you see, I got a different ones here. Let's just call this snail three. You can see I had a couple here that I've been messing around with. And so I'm just gonna save this out, okay? And the next thing that I'm gonna be able to do here is I'm gonna to go to this thread that we have in ZBrush Central. This is where I'm gonna place it. And Joseph's gonna place his here as well. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna mm -hmm. share the link right now. Hold on with you all in the chat. So you guys can also get right to this. There you go. Okay, so this is something we started when we released Mini was a thread um, where you all can actually share models this way. Um, so I have the ability to act like I just did, share it out and saved out a GIF. And you can see even seven days ago, somebody's still sharing. In fact, this is an artist that uses ZBrush and he got so inspired by Mini that he made his full ZBrush look more like Mini. Right, so just an, another example of doing some experiments. So I'm gonna upload mine here. All right, I got mine up. I'm gonna say snail power, because he's snail so power. he's so powerful. He is a very powerful snail. Okay, <laughs> so fast. Don't don't laugh at my snail. He's I'm not laughing. he's he's strong. Okay, so what we're gonna be able to do is just click and drag and have these go right in, so I can grab. And image 3d a gif here right so these are how we can start sharing so you see there's one of my snails right there and so i just hit reply and then now you're going to have the snail oh there's dress yeah okay so i want to save this i'm going to take i'm going to take dress let's let's mess dress up a little bit more. <laughs> let's make it better make wait it better. Uh, oh i doubt i'll make it better but let's do something to it. hold on let me save this to my folder here and uh, let's see, let's save it out. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is, I'm gonna do some fun stuff with this for sure. Okay, but you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go whoa, out whoa, Where are you going? I'm, I'm, I'm leaving Mini, okay? You're leaving Mini. I'm leaving Mini, okay? And what I'm really excited, and this is where everyone's gotta, you know, that know me, the look up here, look up here, look up here. All right, now you're all paying attention. We're proud to introduce you and super excited to show you an update to ZBrush Core. So from here on out, Joseph and I, here's your bomb drop. We have now an update to ZBrush Core for 2021. So we're going to now have the ability to load files. So those those GIFs that image 3Ds, the image 3Ds or yeah. PNGs, I'm actually going to be able to load them right into core here now. So for the rest of the stream, Druss and I are going to live in the new version of core here, right? And we want to show you guys what you can do now in core, plus highlight and show you guys any new features that we've done here. So there is Joseph's. Oh, that is, yeah. that is inside of ZBrush core there. I love it. So this is his core mini model now. 
and I've got it now in ZBrush course. So I'm dressed, I'm gotta do it. So that's where it goes downhill, right? <laughs> I gotta do some stuff. Okay, so we've still got Sculptress, right? So Core Mini had Sculptress and it was just the basic of Sculptress. So now Sculptress Pro, the full version, is here in uh, Core. So I like to use this. I like to go to big brush size and just like kind of destroy some of Joseph's sculpt. So this is that kind of shifting thing that I like to do. So I can even, and the bigger you go, see the more you'll actually, sorry, dress, look away, look away. Look away, I'm looking right at it. I'm, I'm getting Straight rid of- Straight into the headlights, just I'm like getting rid of, What is this called again? Can you give me the name one more time? What is it called? <laughs> axolotl. Axolotl. So I'm getting rid of the axolotl part, right? And <laughs> using Sculptures Pro to get rid of that. And now what I wanna actually do is, I'm gonna Dynamesh this, because I wanna do a little bit more with this, okay? So I'm gonna go to Dynamesh here. I'm gonna get rid of my blur. Let's up my resolution just a bit here because he's got a tail. And I'm gonna throw this in Dynamesh, okay? So now that I have this, the difference here now is you've got equally distributed polygons, okay? So if I wanna start pulling on, like say Joseph's little hands here, right? I can mm -hmm. start pulling on stuff. So let's switch to, let's see, you like the snake hook. So I'm gonna switch to I do like hook. the snake hook. Right, and start switching things out, and then I can read Dynamesh, and you can see we've got dynamic tessellation along with retopologizing on the fly. But the reason, one of the main reasons why um, I wanted to do Dynamesh is one of the brushes that I really like are these chisel brushes. So these are like VDM. So there's undercutting happening. Okay, so I'm going to switch to this because. Ironically, <laughs> this has got some stuff for like a dragon in it, right? Yeah, so, yeah. You got some. You got some uh, people asking for gremlin heads. Just turn it oh, into a gremlin. Oh head. boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, I did save that. We did do that right in the stream. Yep. So I want to throw some horns on him. Maybe I want. Right. So I can merely just draw out and get some horns. There's some different eyes on here. So now we're talking, right? Yeah. Now we're <laughs> making. Oh, yeah. Let's. I'm gonna put actually. You know, sometimes it's fun to try out like a shape you wouldn't. How about throwing an ear? There you go. It's kind of like a little imp now. Yeah, I, sitting on your right. Paul, sitting on your Paul's shoulder and telling you to do bad things. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. <laughs> All right, and then there's some scales in here, right? And now I can just start, in essence, really. And then the the thing about VDMs, everybody, is undercutting, right? So this part right here in the ear. Right, this is an undercut. So the gap between this ear point and the body, that's an undercut. So these VDM brushes are giving me the ability to do that. Right. So any one of these through here, you can have. You know what? Hey, I'm gonna. I want to have some. Fun. I'm gonna go to the other chisel brush. I'm gonna. What if? What would it look like with a dog nose? <laughs> there you go. Just, just keep going. Just that keep going. Bad. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> A pig nose would probably, and it's that's working. But it's like now a slash of the piggy sun. That's right. right? And whatever else we're creating here, right? So <laughs> this is a lot of fun too. And then of course I can keep redynameshing, right? And then I am getting equally distributed polygons along the way. So I have a combination now of using Sculptors Pro with Dynamesh, which is it's a it's a lot of fun. I, I rather. This is a good workflow that I found for myself, especially in the stage that Joseph I was in. I will do a lot of this where I'm doing Sculptures Pro with some Dynamesh. And now mm -hmm, I want to start putting mm -hmm, in some refining mm -hmm. shapes and having this ability to just keep redynameshing on the fly. Right. So I know, Joseph, you want to do some more now to your dragon. Well, I'm going to just I'm going to bring it back to on topic here. All right. So, Kyle, throw it back at Drust right now. You know, throw, throw it at him. Throw it at him. Yeah, so one of the other things, too, that we wanted to kind of show in the stream is kind of the what you can do with your models after you're done with Mini. And so as we're showing ZBrush Core here, this is definitely a 2021 release. So we have some new things we're going to hit on that we've added to Core. But also in general, I just want to show, like, I've got it to Mini, but I can only get to a certain point, And now I want to take it somewhere else. So one main thing that we have here is masking. So masking does exist in ZBrush Core, which Mini didn't have. And so this allows me to now come through and I can quickly, you know, protect certain areas. So I can just grab his arms here and then maybe blur them out a little bit and flip them. And then I can use say the Gizmo 3D and start actually posing with this as well. So I can actually start moving his arms down, making making a little more natural 
in terms of that kind of uh, character I'm looking for. And as Paul mentioned uh, in here as well, you, you know, you definitely have Sculptors Pro. Uh, you also have more control over it than you did Mini, so you actually have a menu you can adjust in the stroke area. I usually like turn off this combined option, and then I change my uh, undivide ratio up. And this is just going to determine how much tessellation and decimation is applied as I'm working on the model. And so you can see all this kind of geometry here that was done with Sculptors Pro. I can come in and start, you know, cleaning up some anomalies on the character here, maybe flushing out some areas around the arms. And so you have a lot of control, or more control than you did in Mini inside of uh, ZBrush Core. Now with this guy too, as I'm kind of thinking about him, looking at him, um, I kind of want to be fatter. So in that end kind of there when I was in Mini, I started, you know, plumping him up. Because you, the original, you know, character itself, I didn't want to have it as the exact creature. I just wanted to use it as an inspiration. So pulling in things like the stuff around his head, I wanted to kind of keep. And then I kind of liked how he had the fin that was sticking out of his body. Um, but for the rest of them, I wanted to kind of like as a stylized type dragon character. And so as I started making him uh, pudgy here, I'm thinking, hey, you know, I want to fatten him up a little bit more. And so another thing we have is the, you know, deformation palette here. And in here we have some of these inflates. And these are a great way just to get some quick kind of uh, inflation or different things on your models. And so this works really well for making things look big and puffy. So I come down here and start messing with this inflate balloon, and you see now I start making them into this chubby <laughs> little water dragon. Um, and so this is a real quick way to come in and just add another element. So I don't have to sculpt all that stuff in. I can just come in and say, like, add an amount, and then that is now applied to the character there. Now, some other thing uh, with this, too, is as I was in Mini, I was starting experimenting with the colors, but I was limited to what I could do with colors. I could set a color and I could set a material, but I couldn't really paint. And so for this character too, I wanna to add you know, some different colors and different variations as well. And so I can come to the texture palette up here and let me just uh, import in some uh, textures quick. Get those and textures. Get, get those, those textures. textures. Get those textures. You guys can see nothing's ever enough for Joseph, okay? Nothing's oh, ever enough. Always, always, always going. So again, and, we're, uh, we're showing the new core for 2021, which there are new additions. So we're, just, we're gonna be showing this whole stream. Sorry, I was just answering something in the chat. Continue. You're just, you're just please continue, please. please interrupting please, me, interrupting please Paul. Please go. <laughs> so when I do color Don't and stuff- Don't let me interrupt you again though next time, okay? Now I did have these prepared beforehand. So I made a bunch of gradients because I knew already that I was gonna do kind of like that axolotl coloring. Um, and so I made some gradients and also have some color palettes. And one thing I like doing, uh, with my models is I'll just have the model in here. So this is straight from mini. And then I'll just come through and append, say a um, plain 3D object. So I'll just add one of these here. And then with this, I can move this off the side, maybe scale it up. Right now it's pretty low resolution geometry. So I can come through here to the geometry tab. And in here I can start dividing this just to give a little more kind of polygons. And then if I apply one of those textures, so I have these color palettes that I want, kind of want to use and I can then fill the object with that color. And now I have kind of this texture plane that kind of can float around. So I can move it, you know, change the position in my scene. And then at any time, if I'm on my model here, I can hover over it and press C, and that's gonna allow me to color pick. So I can come through and quickly, you know, start playing with these different colors on my model. So I can start establishing a base for him. Um, and then I can come up here and we'll do a color fill. So we're actually gonna apply that color to him. And then in addition to this, when I do paintings um, inside of any of the ZBrush stuff, but core here is what we're showing today, you have these different sprays you can apply. So I can come through and say, grab, say, a spray, pick a different color, and then use this with, say, the paint option here. Let me switch back to paint here. And now you can start painting colors this way. You also have options with color sprays you can do as well. We're just going to add some multicoloration variations. And then my personal favorite, what I do, especially I'm kind of making these kind of little cute things, um, is I'll use gradients. And so I'll take one of these gradients, like this one here I have for this body, and then I'll change my paint option to drag rectangle. And what this allows me to do is as I click and drag on the model, it's gonna start applying this gradient to the mesh. And this is really handy for coming in and starting to establish some quick colors. And it gives a nice variation across the entire model. I can apply you know, darker areas to certain spots and just adds a little more 
you know, variation. So I don't have to really have to hand paint the entire thing. I can just use these gradients and just kind of wipe them across the surface here. And they're going to end up giving me, you know, these nice soft values all the way through. And so I've gone through and made a few of these. I have some for his horns over here as well. So I have some brown gradients and I got some horn ones here. And I can just start applying these to these different areas and kind of blending them in. I kind of want to do the Maybe mess with his ones on his back here as well a little bit. Uh, maybe we'll do that a little bit more later. And I can blend back in, say, the body ones again to soften it up. You can also control your intensity here. Just kind of blend those in a little bit. And then finally, another thing as, you know, when I was working in Mini, I was restricted to that one single subtool. And one thing nice about going to Core or the full version of ZBrush is you can use multiple objects in your scene. And breaking things up into parts is a really good way to kind of handle different assets. You can apply different materials to the different subtools. You can do different things to these, and you're not restricted to one solid mesh. So I like appending in eyes as well. So I come through and grab, say, a sphere object. With this, one trick, if you've watched any of the kind of ZBrush masters uh, as well, is I can fill it with a black color. And then I can also set it to this toy plastic material. And this toy plastic material has this little highlight. So it has this nice little shiny reflective highlight in here. So I can come up here and I can now fill this with that color black and also the material, which is that toy plastic. And I'll fill that there. Oh, let me make sure I don't have my texture map applied there. So there we go. Let's get my RGB value back up. And then now if I switch back, you can see that this material has retained that toy plastic material and also the black coloring there. And then I can position these into the model. I want them. And these are things that you just could not do with uh, Core Mini. And oftentimes, uh, if you're sculpting around certain objects, it's a lot easier to kind of detail sculpts out and change the appearance of things. If I want that eyeball on the other side, I can come down here to the Modify Topology area and do a quick mirror and weld. And then I've got both those eyeballs there. And then going back to just paint one more time here, another thing I like to do with just the drag stroke as well, even without a texture map applied, if I just pick another color value, say like something like this, and you can press C anywhere in the ZBrush UI and you're gonna pick that color. So I can just come over and grab this. And then with this, I can start dragging it out and this will allow me to create these little kind of circles that are really nice too. So I can add these little kind of bumps on the model as well. And so just quickly going through and applying different color and variations to that. So fun stuff with that. So Paul, how are you, how are you doing over there? Hey, I'm just, I'm following your footsteps. <laughs> I'm just doing a little uh, painting. And, uh, you know, since I was doing a snail, I made him be a little bit uh, uh, of a geek. Uh, or I don't know. You gave him some glasses? I, don't know, I just gave him some glasses. I don't even think that's a geek thing anymore. You know, I have glasses, so. Oh, I am a, I am a, I am a dork. Okay, but something else that I actually like to use a lot, and um, as far as inside of ZBrush and ZBrush Core, is I'm a big fan of these primitives. Um, I find this very useful to get really quick shapes sometimes. So in this example, like I want to change up this, this snail shell. You, the helix is actually a really good way to do this. Okay, so I want to show a couple of things and I'm going to touch on a couple of things that we've added to ZBrush Core as well. Okay, so this is, um, I'm turning on my floor grid here so you guys can see. And then this up here is telling me if I'm looking, and Joseph, you should pay attention to this point in my, my presentation. This Thanks. shows you that you're looking at the front of a model, okay? So Joseph likes to sometimes sculpt upside down. So that's why I'd it's always up. do, yeah, always. It's, it's, it's inside joke for me with him. He <laughs> likes to be, for whatever reason. So this will allow you guys to snap to three quarter views, right? Which is very handy. So it's also a navigational thing. And then you can flip between um, up, bottom, right? And then front, back, okay, and so forth and so on. So I'm turning the floor grid on um, because I want to use this. I want to make a new shell with this and I want to use the helix. Okay, so when we have any of these shapes that have the 3D at the end of them, so the cube 3D, cylinder 3D, the sweep profile is also very, very cool. I use that one a lot for some quick things. But the helix, like, I, I, for some, a lot of people get asked, hey, well, how do I make like a spring? This is the easiest way to do it. Go here and then take this little graph here and just delete the dot by pulling it out. And then there you've got like a, a spring. Yay! That easy, right? So 
I'm looking at looking at my model. He's looking straight on the way we would want to, straight on the Z. So what I want to do is I want to align this along the X. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my coverage, number one. So I don't want as much spiraling happening, right? So all this coverage is doing is just going to more and more spiral. And in fact, this is what I use to actually even 3D print. I wish I was by my bag right now. And I'm working screw. Like I have a screw that actually will screw in and screw out, screw in and screw out that I print off an FDM printer. This is what I use to actually make the threads for the screw as well, right? So just outside the box thinking, okay? So now that I have this coverage changed, I want to change it up a little bit to make something that looks a little bit more like a shell, right? So that's where all these other profiles are going to come into play. All right. So you got an offset, right? So you can see this is in essence just moving the shell, in essence, this spiral offset ability. So I'm using this graph. So see if I further apart is like keeping it further apart. So this is more like this is more like a pasta. You know, you want some pasta for Jolie. And then this is uh this is just now more like think about what is that the pin on a grenade, right? Think about that where it's kind of just a tight spiral, right? That's very different. So our offsets are going to give us this ability to kind of control this, in essence, that squishing, right? And then my radius, I kind of want to have a different radius, right? So you can have different types of radius. So you can see now it's having there and within that. And you can just pull on these dots to get something a little different, right? And then I have a thickness ability. So I'm going to go a little bit more thick with this. So I'm looking at more of something like that. And now it's just finding the actual what I want. I'm going to go a little bit tighter. I want to have a little bit less of an offset. And let's play with the thickness a little bit more. Something more like, more like this, maybe. Yeah, something more like this, right? So you can see how I can just quickly use this to create some kind of new like spiraling shell. I know you guys all wanted to do it. I know you're welcome. You've always <laughs> wanted to create a shell in ZBrush. There you go for a snail, right? So again, I'm just clicking on these dots and moving them, right? And if you guys want to add dots at any point in time, and this information I'm giving you right now is Lisa needs braces. Look up here, look at me right now. Because whatever I'm going to give you here, it's across the board. Anywhere where you see a graph like this in ZBrush, it's going to work the same way. And so what I mean by that is if I want to add a dot, I just click anywhere on this. And then if I want to move the dot, I just click and move, right? That's that's it. That's all I have to do. Then this big circle is controlling like the roll off of that dot, okay? And if I want to delete it, I click and drag outside and then just let go. And then it deletes. Now, what also is convenient about this is right now we've got like a curve that's starting to be rounded, okay? You can actually click, drag off, and drag back in, and now you can see it's a sharp. So you can see that is definitely not what I want. That is but, not a snail shape. Mm -mm. No, it's no longer snail, right? So, but you can see how quick you can do that, those dots. And by the way, for those that maybe don't know, you can actually tap on the dot and we'll zoom in. Because there's times where I'm doing things with these graphs, like IE when I'm using panel loops or something like that. I got dots really close together. And I don't think I've like, ever done that. I feel like dot is no. You've never done I don't that. I've ever done the zoom. No. You're you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what the streams are all about, people. Us us sharing things and helping each other out, right? That's that's the world of art. Right, so you do have that zoom cable. So clearly, I don't want that. I want something more like this. Okay, so again, like Joseph was saying, the benefit of us having um, something like this, where we've got ability to add subtools. So this is just a primitive. So in essence, think about this more as like a shape that's mathematically being figured out. All right, and I gotta do it. I gotta go on a little tangent. All right, tangent button. Here we go. So if like the sweep 3D, right? Again, the same kind of protocol here you've got two graphs you've got what axis do you want to even align it along right and you can see how quickly just adding another dot i can open up the bottom right so maybe this is going to be uh some kind of hat or maybe it's going to be a skirt that i'm going to start to make for a character of a female right and now i've got a little bit of a shape of a skirt that we have here and i've got an opening on the top and an opening on the bottom 
right? And I can even change that. I can add some thickness. So you can see, I, I, I use this sweep one to do some really sometimes very quick, simple shapes that I know that I want it to be radially happening and just using the dots to, and I just watch things. There's a lamp. There's a lamp bottom. Okay. So <laughs> go to commercial. We got for chat. Go to commercial. Listen. He's off script. <laughs> I, I go off script often people. That's why I need my tangent button. All right. So back to this. Okay. So what I'm trying to get to these is these are just primitive shapes. So if I want to now use this and sculpt on it, I'm going to come over here and say, make poly mesh. Okay. And now this is saying here, that's selected, it's a PM 3D. And what I wanna do now is add it to my amazing snail. And what I've done is I've started making subtools like Joseph was doing here, okay? And so I broke off my original snail, oh, right? And now I want to add the new one and start positioning and sizing it up. So I want it to be right below him. So instead of a pending, and this is the between a pend and insert, I'm gonna hit insert. Okay, and when insert now is going to say it's pop open and say, hey, what tool or mesh do you want to add to your amazing snail? That okay. snail really needs a uh, a shell. He needs a shell. Mm -hmm. So there, I've added him, and you can see my snail is completely he's bigger than the one I was making. But this sub tool is now right below, right his body. That's the difference between insert and append. If I go in pen, a pe in pen, in pen. That's and the special I say, one. It just, just does. It just does what you want. You have no choice. It's going to do one or the other. Yeah. And so I threw a star, and now I see it's at the bottom of your list. Okay. So that's that's the big difference between insert. So now, like Joseph said, we have now the gizmo, and now I'm just going to size this up. Uh, I'm going to rotate it to be more like this. Okay. And you know what? Let's reset this. And position this more in a position that I oh yeah <laughs> oh I know you're all excited stop it stop it right and what I'm going to do next is I want to show you something also that's been added to core so I'm moving this in the world right so by the way if you have your gizmo off centered like this hold the alt key and hit this reset and then it'll reset it back to the world so I'm just looking kind of at the center of this snail. And if we want here, we'll turn this all off. And I'm looking at this green line right here. And you can see there's another one right there. So what I want to do is just kind of have it centered a little bit in the world like that. I kind of want this side. And see that red line is the important side for me. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is something that uh, I use it more than I probably should, and it's mirror and weld, right? So now when I mirror and weld, I get the other side of my snail guy, okay? And then I can divide up now, right? Because we're in, we've got ability to have subdivisions now in here, okay? And then now I can switch to any brush that I want. I can start sculpting on this. So for me, I want to get rid of the internal geometry and I want to fix some of this. I don't. I don't want this in the bottom, and maybe I want to change the shape a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to say let's dynamesh this. I'm just going to say all right, that's good enough. And then what's new is now ZRemesher is now available to you in ZBrush Core. So it's going to be the default settings of ZRemesher, and then we added also the half button. So right now this model is sitting at 327,000 polygons. If I have the half button on and I press this, it's going to give me half that. I'm going to stick with uh, symmetry on, and I'm just like, just ZRemesher, give me something that you want, okay? And I just want I just want new topology in essence to play here. So the Dynamesh got rid of the internal topology for mm -hmm, me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which was a good step for me. So I don't have to worry about remeshing that. And now I'm just remeshing this shell. And what I want to do is get something like this where it's a little bit lower polygons. And remember, we were at 327,000. Now I'm at 11,000. Okay. So this makes it even easier for me to, to just keep playing with this. But let's turn now this back on. Let's turn his, turn his body back on. And I want to play with this a little bit. And so what I can do in the gizmo, which is I, I use this quite a bit. This is one of the features I'll use that. I like to go into this gear. So besides using all these shapes in the top, this is where you guys can also get to your deformers. And in core, you're going to have 
some deformers here. So you got six deformers here. So I'm going to use deformer soft. Okay. So I was saying you need to turn off symmetry. Okay. And the reason being is I don't even need symmetry on in the brush because this has symmetry to it itself. Okay. And so all these little white dots are points of interest. Okay. That I can points do. Points of so interest. The point you like that points of I like that, yeah, yeah. We are just giving I you some new it points of a lattice today. or something. <laughs> your <laughs> audio interest gotten, works. Your audio's gotten lower for me. Is it just me? It's, or is it might it, just be you? I don't know. Is it just me? Maybe maybe Kyle's in there turning me up and down. Well, I'm just making sure because last night in the stream I was getting something that was only happening to me, which is fine. Okay? You're louder now for sure. Well, I'm no, I'm saying you. Are not loud to me. <laughs> we know I'm loud. Okay. We well, just switched. It fluctuated again. So you're louder now. Uh, all right. I blame Kyle. ABBK. Oh, ho, 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 ho. bringing it back, baby. Bringing it back. Okay. So let's continue on. Okay. So what I can do is maybe the shape of this, I want to maybe make, you know, maybe I want it to taper a little bit, maybe, or widen along the top. And obviously, I want it to happen on both the left and the right side. So this. Uh, red cone here is my symmetry ability. So I'm just going to, right, move this all the way over. Sound effects, very important. Joseph, you watch the chat right now. Okay, I'm watching it. All right. So we have two different types of symmetry, by the way, people. I don't know if you're aware of this, but you should be. So there's parallel and there's mirroring. So right now I have mirror So you can see all the dots on this side disappeared. And if I just click on this dot, you can see I'm changing the shape here. And from above, I can even like, oh, I want the back end to be a little bit wider. And you see it's happening on both sides. So from the, as far as this goes, it looks like some starry shape now, right? Well, then I can say, oh, I like that. Let's accept that. And let's throw another one on here again. And now I've got another one that's symmetrical for me. And for me, what feature I really like to do is you know when you're masking all of us probably do this and then we inverse a mask right so what i mean by that is here let me well let me load something here that i can mask on real quick yeah yeah okay so if we have something like this right and now you guys want oh i want to do like this but that's the part you actually want to sculpt on we do this right where we inverse the mask right so i hold control i'm dragging out now I'm not holding the keyboard. So key, people. Don't hold that keyboard. Now I can hold the space bar, right? And then what's key, again, not holding the keyboard, just hold Alt now, and whatever's in the box already gives me that math. So I saved myself some time. Like when we did this, I was like, no, nah, nah, that's nice. That's a nice addition. I live, breathe, eat, sleep. And there's this for all of us as artists. There's little things that make us go faster. And this is one of the things for me to make me go faster. Like that to me is a lot faster than doing this and then doing that, right? So the reason why I'm bringing that up is the deformers are going to work this way. So when we go to the deformer, these little dots, we want to mask out. So if I don't want these dots to be affected, you know, you draw open a mask and see they disappear. But instead of doing that, I can just say, you know, these are the only dots I want to affect. So I just do this. And now you can see only those two dots are available to me. I don't know why I keep using dots. Let's use points now. Let's use points. And then now I can adjust see and, and make a new guy. And I can add. And see, that's an easy way for me to add. And then easy way for me for subtract. And now I can do a little more stylized snail backhand, right? But of course, you guys relate this to your model, right? So this is, this is a way for me to start working and looking at my model and start changing some things. So I, I, again, you guys should really play with these primitives. They're, they're really useful. But I'm going to kick it back to Joseph now because he's, he wants to make a friend for his friend. I already did it while you were waiting. I, I, I've, I've held back from continuing. <laughs> well, show them what you're doing over there. <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm, we're going to go in reverse. So um, yeah, so the little dragon. Um, he wanted a little, you know, a little friend here. And they're going on with what Paul was kind of showing. I'm just going to go through the process of kind of how I did this. Um, so it's actually pretty fast. And this is one of the things, you know, talking about ZBrush Core here is something that many didn't have was the multiple subtools. And now with ZBrush Core having zero measure, you can use this to your advantage. So we had some questions in chat too about like retopology and stuff like that. 
Um, and so zero mesher will give you topology from your high resolution model. So for this little dragon guy here, um, what I did was I first just took my initial model here and I just made a duplicate version of it. So I just now have two of these in the scene. And if I take this and kind of move him around here, you can see that I have two of these. So I just have created a duplicate version of it. Now with the duplicate version here, what I wanna do is I wanna reduce him down in size and then I also wanna reduce the poly count on the mesh. And so the initial thing I just went and created here was I wanted kind of a little stuffed animal. So something that was kind of look like a yarn toy. Um, so thinking of this dragon is maybe like a little baby dragon. And then of course he's got his cute little stuffed version of kind of himself. Um, so with this, I took my duplicate version here. And you can see this has been Dynamesh. So as Paul was sculpting there, I Dynameshed the model to give me a little more uh, polygons to allow me to colorize things a little better. I adjusted some of the color areas using that paintbrush as we showed earlier, using that drag rectangle shape and some more of those gradients just to add a little more color there. And since my topology initially was created with Sculptress Pro, some of the topology wasn't dense enough in other areas, in some areas, so I wasn't getting a clean transition uh, between those colorings. So as I went through and just dynameshed it, which gave it all, you know, even topology across the entire mesh there. And then that allows me to add that color variation uh, a little bit better through the sculpt. So with the version here, the duplicates, I'm gonna come down here to the Z remesher area. And once again, I'm gonna do that same thing Paul did. So I'm first just gonna Z remesh this model. Now, Copier. one thing I'm <laughs> and one thing you notice here, this is going to zero mesh the model down. So it's going to take the model that right now is 1.72 million polygons here. And it's just going to look at it. It's going to look at that sculptural detail. And it's going to generate a low res resolution version for it. So one of the questions we had here was, you know, can I take a high resolution model and then retopologize it? This is a way you can do it. So you can use zero mesher, and this is going to give you automatic topology. Now you'll see the result here in a second. And this is gonna vary the time it takes based on the um, density of your mesh here. And let me just switch back to this here. So this is the result that I got. So it went through and it took that almost 2 million polygon model, the Dynamesh version I had, and now it's given me this as topology. So this is, hopefully will answer the question about the retopology thing. You can come through and then use this to get your quick topology. And then, if you're in, say, the professional version of ZBrush, there's some other ways you can create topology as well. But with the addition of zero mesher inside of ZBrush Core, this gives an easy way just to come through and remesh a model. Now, with this model here, now that I've got it kind of remeshed, I'm going to go ahead and reposition it. So I'm going to get out a solo here. You can see it's still sitting in that same orientation. So if I wanted to bake, say, normal maps or different maps out of its same external application, I could export out the high resolution model, export out the low resolution model, and do the bake. Um, I could also, um, you know, do some other things that would allow me to get that process done as well inside of Core here. Now I'm going to move the one I've have here, the duplicated version. As you can see, here is the little zero meshed version here. I'm just going to scale it down here and then maybe position it somewhere around here. Now the topology on this is still a little bit high, so I'm going to run zero mesher again. And one thing with zero mesher, if I activate this half button and run it again, it's going to look at this current version of the model and then zero mesh it as well. So you can run this process multiple times, and this is going to allow you to get that polygon count lower and lower. And as you do this, it's looking at the current topology you have applied. And so it's also going to smooth out some of these forms. So I wanted this to be kind of a toy kind of effect here with this model. So I'm gonna run it a few times and get these kind of shapes a little bit softer here because I didn't want them as detailed as the original mesh. And then now I can take this and say, rotate it and position it and make it look like it's in my dragon's hand here. Something like this. There, there, there we go, it's holding on to there. And then now, after I have it kind of like this here, I can now go and add an effect to it. And so I could sculpt it, I could add you know, coloring to this, I can do whatever I want, but with the zero mesher process here, we now, inside of ZBrush 2021, ZBrush Core 2021, we've also added the ability to allow you to use micropoly. So the micropoly functionality was added to the professional version of ZBrush. We've also now included it inside of ZBrush Core 2021 here. 
So I can activate dynamic mode, and this is going to allow you to preview the model as it had traditional subdivisions applied. So this will allow you to take a model and kind of think of it as a low-resolution version and then applying subdivisions to it, but it's not actually applying them. It's just kind of giving you a preview. And so you control how smooth that model is. So you can see as I've cranked this up and down, you can see that right now it's kind of facetted, so you're seeing the polygon structure. And if I change this smooth slider here, you can see it starts smoothing out. So this is another way you can take models inside of ZBrush Core now and apply dynamic subdivision to them, which is one of the big features that people use a lot inside of the professional version. Now, with this, we have this micropoly that we've added. And micropoly is going to look at all the individual polygons on your mesh here. And this is going to allow you to add a part to all those polygons. And so here, if I just click micro micropoly on, it's going to give me a list of all these different options in here. And so I come through and select these. And then now this is going to be applied to my model. So now I've applied micropoly to the dinosaur here. And I've just got this look. I can cycle through the different micro polys here. And you can just kind of play with this and see what looks best on your model. Now, this is all live right now. So as this micro poly is being applied, I can still scope to the model. And then this micro poly is going to go with it. So if I decided that I liked kind of this cloth version of the dragon here, so it's kind of giving me that you know, that little kind of uh, knitted kind of effect. And then I decide, hey, maybe this ear is, you know, looking a little bit funny. I can still come in here and say, smooth this down. I can actually use any of those sculpting brushes I had originally and start deforming this. And that micro poly is going to follow it. So just think of it as this geometry shape is replacing those individual polygons on your model, but you can distort the model. And then that little object is going to go with it. So it's a really cool way to make, you know, pretty complex uh, designs pretty quick. Now, after I'm happy with this, um, I can apply it. So right now, it's a preview. So if I turn it off, you, know, you can see I can have it on or off really quick. It's kind of a non-destructive workflow at this stage. And then if I want to apply it to the model, I click the Apply button over here. And this is going to take all this dynamic option, and it's going to turn it into subdivisions. And so now I have that micro poly applied. And this is now true geometry. So if I turn on my wireframe here, you can see that all these little bits of fibers here from that micro poly are now geometry. And so what I can do now is I can take this and go back to that paintbrush again that I had. And then let's go and grab this brown gradient texture here. In here, I can go to that RGB and then start dragging this on the model here to apply some different coloring there. So maybe he's got like this brown kind of knit effect. And so just another way you can kind of use that zero mesher option to take a model you already had sculpted, size it down, zero mesh it to get it low enough, and then use the dynamic option now inside of ZBrush Core with that micro poly to kind of get this effect. And then if I get out of solo, you can see now it looks kind of like that stuffed animal. And then for the eyes, I can just simply take these, say duplicate them. I can now move them down and you know then rescale them a little bit, rotate them, kind of position them where I want to go. I could also have done this uh, earlier in the process here. And then they would have, um, the one I did the first time, actually just merged them together and then just had the model already positioned. So we're going to well, stop here. Well, you can throw the insert mesh brush in that flow if you want to. Too. Oh, you could too, yes. Yeah. So we also have the abilities to insert objects. We have primitives. So I can just take the new spheres and then say, grab this, go back to this one. Let's go back to my original one I just did here. And I could come through and say, hey, let's just add an eye, so I can grab, say, a sphere, click and drag, and that's going to add that right Perfect. to the model there. There we Perfect. go. He's got, got the googly eyes. Perfect. Show them how to make them the same size. It's too late now. <laughs> Show them how to make the eyes the same size. So I, you can do that by I'm holding taking over this stream. I'm taking over this stream. <laughs> so if you're using insert mesh brushes, and so as I have my model here, and I want to add one eye here, make sure you're not in solo, because then it's going to go hidden. But as you draw it out, if you hold down Control, it's going to snap to the draw size. So if I hold down Control, this is now going to be the size of that model there is a size of 74. And if I turn this down and click and drag, it's going to be now 29. And so that will be the same size as that one now on the other side. So as you're drawing it out, just hold down Control, and then it's going to look at the draw size and use that to size your insert mesh brush. And so now i got my yeah. little guy with his eyes there. So this is the one I did when Paul was making his snail shell there. Now, in addition to this, with my little dragon here, so he was, you know, that water dragon. 
Um, and as you know, I, I got to the stage and I was waiting on Paul to finish that snail. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I got it. I got it. I'm taking too long. I get it. <laughs> and so I decided I want to add them wings too. And so another thing that's inside of ZBrush core, uh, is the ability to use uh, Z spheres and Z spheres can be found in the little menu here. And they're just this little kind of ball of, uh, I don't even know how you would, what would you describe Z sphere as Paul? <laughs> um, a, a sphere of a sphere, a sphere, a of, Z? sphere of geometrical goodness. And so what this allows you to do is you can come through and you can start modeling shapes and forms with these. So basically you start with a root sphere and then I can click and drag and this, let me get my coloring out of here, is going to allow me to add more spheres. So I can take that, add another sphere there. I can then switch to move, move these around and go back to draw, add another sphere. I can scale these do a little moving. And then as you're doing this, if we come down here to our menu in the tool palette here called adaptive skin, I can take what I'm building with these Z spheres and then turn them into a mesh. So if I come here and click preview or press A on my keyboard, it's now going to take that and give me geometry. And then from this geometry, I can then go and start sculpting on it. So it's a great way to build base meshes. If you guys have ever used ZBrush Core, we also have a whole slew of little models that have been created using this process. And they're located in this folder called the Zizu. And if I open this up, you can see all these little animals you can use actually as base primitives inside of ZBrush Core to start sculpting on. And these are created by Shane Olson. So he did an awesome job of creating all these little different characters for us. Is there a the snail? Uh, I don't I, think there is. Okay. There's a fish. I don't think there's a snail. <laughs> a snail. I'm just I don't saying. think there's a salamander either. No. So. Uh, we, sh we could have probably started from those if there was one. <laughs> we could have probably chose one of these animals is what it really came down to. Well, shh, that would have been smart. Just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you have an entire library of uh, these Z-sphere creatures, and these are all created with the same kind of process of using these Z-spheres, and then you can take these, turn geometry, and then start sculpting. Now, one thing nice about the Z-sphere process as well is as you're doing this, you can modify these. So I can move these over here. I can keep adding more of these. So I know I want to do some sort of wing for the uh, character here. So I'm just going to add a few and then I can manipulate these by simply just moving them around so I can add different shapes to them. You can also, you know, they kind of have this kind of animation or like, I don't know, like movement kind of property. So it's kind of like almost you have some sort of bones here and so you can play with the deformations. Trust, not sort of, there is an actual bone structure there. Is an actual, it's a hierarchy. Let's go. With that. Yeah, it's. I think the best thing I, I think a bat is a really good one to look at if you're doing dragon wings. For me, for me, I, I like using a bat reference. Bat, Batman, Batman reference. Batman, not the dog, but not the dog. Actual bat. <laughs> and so as you can see, I can start using this to start generating my shape here. Now I can move these around too. So I'm gonna come through and just kind of move my. Go and get my whole rig here actually move let's just let's just undo this quick we'll redo the process do the move here and we're just going to move this root here so you kind of want it in the center of the body here and then we go back to draw we actually click on draw and we're going to add our z spheres in here with draw and move those out and then we're going to draw another one on top of that move that out and you see I can come through and now just quickly start shaping these wings on my uh, character here. Now, after you've got these kind of shaped, you know, I can play with the different form here. I can come through and add a little bit more of these as well. So I'm gonna add one off of this and then pull this down to say there. And then maybe add another one here. That. And so they're kind of really forgiving in how you're using them. So you can definitely play with the process here and you can scale them down. And as I'm doing this, I can keep testing them with that preview. So I like to turn my DynaMesh option off and then maybe turn up the density and turn on this classic skinning mode. And then if I hit A, you'll see I'm starting to get that wing shape. So this is what I have with Z spheres. And then now I have this wing shape starting to take form. Now, I can also add these things called magnet spheres, which can also be done with ZBrush. And this is going to take the existing Z spheres you have, and it's going to allow you to pull the geometry to these parts. So if I come and add one here and then move this down like that, and then maybe scale this down a little bit. And if I go back into draw, and if I hold down the Alt key and then click on 
the part here, you'll see it's gonna turn into this weird little type of Z-sphere. So it has a point down here and then has this connection one. Now this is a magnet sphere. So these spheres are gonna look at this and then also use it to kind of drive. And this is gonna allow me to get that kind of swooping shape with a wing. So if I turn on my preview now, you can see I'm getting this one before I had kind of that harsh shape. So I can add a few of these as well to my Z-spheres here and just move these around. So I'm gonna add another one here, hold down that control key, click. Oh, make sure you're in draw mode and not mass there. Hold on, I'm making a mess. Making a mess, Paul. It's usually useful making sure you're in the right mode. It helps. Yes, and alt click is what I wanted, not control click. <laughs> this is why I have you on stream. That's exactly. I'm here for just comic relief. It's like, how do I do this, Paul? So there we go. So now we've added those. I hit A to check this, move my spheres around. And you can see now I'm starting to get this kind of wing shape. And I can move these where I want them to kind of get that shape flowing there. And I can also adjust these. So I can use the rotate option to kind of rotate these up and down. I can change their angles. So you have a lot of kind of different ways you can control how those Z spheres are going to make those wings. So this is a great way to come through and just establish, you know, quick base shapes for things like wings on a character. Now, after you're happy with this, I can turn this into an adaptive skin. And this is now going to throw it up at the top here. So here's my little wing shape. And at this stage, this is topology. So I could come through and say, go to that dynamic menu and turn on that dynamic subdivision. I could see what this is going to look like with, say, micro poly again. So maybe he wants some kind of, you know, crazy uh, knitted wings as well. So I could definitely do that. I can try different forms. Maybe I'm doing a, some sort of sci-fi dragon. So you have a lot of possibilities for creativity um, as you're using this. Now, if I want to go back to my original scene here, I can append that wing back in. And so now I've got the wing as a new sub tool. Now I can come through and say, hey, maybe I didn't want it as dynamic. May I want to apply that Dynamesh option now. So just Dynamesh that now. And then now I can come in and say, let's do a color fill to give that some color. And then we go back to our sculpting brushes and start sculpting out on this mesh as well. So a lot of flexibility in this. And you can see I just created those simple wing shapes there, just using that Z-sphere as a start. I can activate that Sculptors Pro option again to allow me to come through and kind of tailor this out. So it's really open-ended in what you can do. So you have a lot of, a lot of different things. Yeah, one of the questions came up from MicroPoly. Um, you cannot add your own MicroPolys in ZBrush Core 2021. So this is obviously the new version of ZBrush Core that we're showing, but obviously in full version of ZBrush, you can make your own micro polys and add your own micro polys, but we will not be allowing that in ZBrush Core 2021. And so there you go. Now the dinosaur's starting to get those wings. He's coming to life. He's coming there. He's flying now. He's got his little toy. He's flying. Flying. All right, can I take back the screen now? Is you it can, because I'm just going to sculpt these wings for a while now. Uh, all right, you go sculpt You go sculpt their wings, OK? So uh, here's something else that's been added for ZBrush Core 2021. And again, we're giving you guys a sneak peek of what ZBrush Core 2021 update's going to have for you. So one of the updates it's going to have is this is an application that we've had, which is Sculptress. So of course, there's Sculptress Pro and all the ZBrushes, ZBrush Core Mini, ZBrush Core, and ZBrush, but that's very different. That's why it's called Sculptures Pro. There is a lot more you can do with Sculptures Pro than you can within Sculptress. And that, and it wouldn't be a stream unless we showed something that's in Joseph's backyard. For those that have been streaming this forever, here's a here's a frog that he has in his backyard. We all know. <laughs> he just sits on that sphere. He all sits on that ball. <laughs> you, do, you know you have some too, right? I know you do. Okay. Surprisingly, I've never printed this out. It's one thing. I, I... You should. Yeah, I'm surprised they don't. Do you sounds remember like, those old? Like uh, hold on, we're going on a tangent. Has Mad balls. Mad to do balls. With yes. No, I'm not going there. Do you remember? I think it was maybe '90s where uh, they had like stands in a garden and it just had a, a chrome ball. Like they oh, would be like, the garden spheres or garden. Yes. Um, uh, what are they called? I don't know, but this you got a new generation right here. You could do the stand and have a garden frog. Oh, what are they called? They got a name. They got a name. Do they? I didn't even know they yeah. had a name. It's, it's garden something, but I can't remember. There's like some, it's not like it's garden orb. Whatever. Anyway, if you come with it, you can throw it in. <sighs> Gazing okay. ball. There it is. We got one in the oh, chat. Oh, someone there got it. Go. All right. There I, you go. I had no idea it had a name. 
All right, so Sculptress is in essence dynamic tessellating. So what we're going to be able to do for some of you that may have had Sculptress in, in the past and you've used it and you've got some files, you are now going to be able to load your Sculptress files into the ZBrush Core 2021. So this is really easy. I'm just coming over here to do my old handy dandy save. Then I'm going to call this tree fog, i.e. I want to call it just dresses tree. This is his sculpt, by the way, too. Okay. So I save that out. And then now in core, right, I'm just going to select, let's say, this little uh, this little star here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is import now. And so when you're importing inside of ZBrush core and ZBrush, you're replacing the mesh that's selected. So this is why I'm selecting this star. So I'm just going to go to import here, right? And hold on, it opened up on the other side, my other monitor. Let me get it over here. And so, right? So right here's my tree frog. And then I'm gonna click on that and bingo! We now have the file that was in Sculptress, right? Now, and you can see all the dynamic tessellation that was also being done, right? Inside of ZBrush Core. So of course, if you guys wanna continue the process of using something like a dynamic tessellation, you absolutely can do this, right? Because we have the ability to having Sculptress Pro now with dynamic tessellation. However, to kind of start answering some of the questions that are coming through right now in the chat, um, specifically someone asked really what's the difference between dynameshing and subdivisions? There's a big difference. Like there's a fork in the road and you gotta go subdivisions at one point, honestly. Right, because if you are in a workflow where you're just gonna strictly stick Dynamesh, you're really kind of putting yourself in the corner with baby. And unfortunately, Patrick Swayze isn't available anymore to come pull you out, okay? <laughs> so don't get in that corner with baby. Reference 80s, there you go, you're welcome. So I wanted to, this mesh now, I actually want to get subdivision levels. So now in core, we have now the Ziri mesher, right? So this is gonna be a great opportunity. So this. This model happens to be symmetrical, right? So I'm gonna turn on symmetry. I'm gonna remesh in. I'm gonna show you the difference between having subdivision levels and then Dynamesh and why, if you're not embracing subdivision levels right now, you want to, right? This is what one of the subdivision levels is one of the things that put ZBrush on the map, right? We take for granted now because we have it. But when that came about, we're, we were like, what? right? Because it's going to allow us to have multi-resolution sculpting, okay? <laughs> uh, Dice <laughs> doesn't get my joke. Dice doesn't get the joke. Oh, Dice oh, It's okay. Not everybody get. I'm getting old. It's okay. I get it. All right. So I have this now divided. As you can see, it's low polygon, right? We've got a nice geometrical flow. You can see the remesher did a good job of trying to follow the sculpt here. Right, and so now our benefit here again is, oh, I want to start adding maybe some other details. Okay, so I can divide up, right? And so now, see, I'm back where I was, where it was just in essence the sculptress version of this, right? And I can keep going, and now I'm at a million polygons. Why this becomes beneficial is this: now that I'm at a million polygons, let's grab something like this. I love using some spray, and let's use an alpha seven, and let's put some just some wart details on the back of this frog. I'm gonna turn off Sculptress now because I just wanna work with subdivision levels. So now I can start see spraying this. So the benefit here is with a higher resolution, I can start getting some of these details, right? But then maybe I'm looking at this frog and I'm going, mm, I want this frog to be a little bit bigger, right? And let's even go one more. Let's go to 4 million polygons. Let's get crazy. Not really, but let's add so those details even pop even more. Here's the advantage now of having subdivision levels. Okay, so in fact, here, let's duplicate this. Bing! All right, sound effects, so very crucial. So and cool. let's, so what? Crucial. So it, crucial. They're very important. So let's Dynamesh this one. So I'm, I'm going to guess like 250-ish resolution. Eh, let's go more. Let's try to really keep some of those details I've been throwing in there. Okay, so there, that's good enough. That's a Dynamesh. So see, I'm sitting at, well, you know what? I'm stubborn. <laughs> Let's get it around the polygon count, close to it as I can. There, 1.6 million, good enough, right? So your difference here now is this is a Dynamesh version, 
right? So this is, you can see how dense this is, right? And then this other subtool is a subdivided version that's just in, as dense and it's more dense right now. This is 4.1 million polygons. So here's your benefit of using subdivision levels over using a Dynamesh. I now want to change the, the form and the shape of this frog. I want to be maybe a little bit bigger, have a bigger back. I can walk down my subdivision levels. So I'm using the shift, shift, shift D, right? So you just hold shift and tap D. And every time you tap D, you walk down. If you just tap on the D, dynamite, you walk up, right? So shift, tap the D, walk down, tap the D, walk down, tap the D, walk down, blah, 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 okay? And now you can see I'm back down to 16,000 polygons. So what this allows me to do is I can switch to the move brush, right? And I can say, you know, let's, let's, he's got a hump. My hump, my hump, my hump, right? I want to make some kind of different frog that's not realistic that maybe I'm doing prehistoric frog now. Oh, oh, oh. And then let's, let's, let's do it. Let's, he's still got his tadpole tail yeah oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah right and so the benefit here people as you can see the person asked the question i can change the form really large changes and then the beauty is these forms and changes right they're having a, a low low so number one it's really easy to move this right and i'm moving this very fluently and easy but then i can walk back up and you can see all my sculpt comes starts coming back to me. Yeah, and the key oh. thing here is that it's a lot easier to move those little amount of polygons. You'll be able to get these broad changes instead of the uh, small micro ones. I'm doing my Celine Dion. It's all coming back to me now. Okay, so if we switch to the other, by the way, people, that stuff just comes to me. Don't ask me why. Just, just, just roll with me. Just keeps going. Just keeps going. All right, so. In this case, this is a Dynamesh with only 1.6 million. And like Joseph just finished saying, if I'm now going to move this, see, I'm moving a shape that already has all this and it's Dynamesh. So I'm moving very dense topology now, right? And then now I have no ability to quickly go down and make big form changes, right, that I would want to make, okay? And still keep clean topology. Right. This is always now going to be Dynamesh topology. And I got to sit and see now that got more dense there when I read Dynamesh. Right. And for the point here is if I go all the way in core, which the resolution caps at 1024 in full ZBrush, you can go all the way to 4096. OK. And so <clears throat> the point here is if you're going to keep sticking in Dynamesh, you're gonna get more and more and more and more dense. And see, now I'm sitting around 4 million. And now it's just, there's gonna be a point where, see, now it's, see, it's blobby, see? Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. I'm at the point where the other one is. I don't have that problem now in the subdivided version, right? Because I can go to the back to the subdivided version, walk down, I can stay with the same brush size and see it's just doing little movements, but it's not doing like, it's like being pulled out like that, right? Compared to this one, See, I was creating my hump, my hump, my hump. I've got a lot of songs today. You do have a lot of songs today. Right? So to the person who's asking the question, does that answer your question? Why you would want to go subdivision levels versus Dynamesh? And the time to switch, because I'm sure that's going to be your next question. This is, this, is my, this is my rule. I only use Dynamesh now for what it was originally made for, which is designing the beginning 20% of my sculpt. Proportion the silhouette, right. the base mesh, yeah. The silhouette, the form, and now you've got this little handy dandy window to help you with silhouette now, right? That's it. Once I have that, I switch and I switch to Z remeshing and adding subdivision levels. This is why in ZBrush Core 2021, we've added Z remesher. We wanted to give Core a little bit more of a push, right? That gives that a little bit more of that workflow that we're doing in the full version of ZBrush, okay? So before I throw it back to Joseph, I want to answer another question that came through. So someone asked about surface noise, uh, even though they were asking Joseph, it's, I'm taking it, I'm taking it. <laughs> okay, you were asking, uh, Sad, about doing, um, using noise on low polygons. You can use it on anything, right? So here's the benefit to using dynamic subdiv as well. So we've got a surface ability. 
right? So I can say in here, oh yeah, look at this, beautiful. I can scale it up and see all this noise now that's happening on the model and we can use this graph to, oh yeah, make them have a little bit more wart looking and then I'm gonna scale that up even more, right? You can see this is all happening on the low polygon and I can even mask off stuff I don't want it to have happening, inverse it and I only want it now maybe happening there. And but I, like I can throw turtle frog. Yeah. But I can throw on dynamic now in core and I can see it smoothed. Right. So now I'm looking, you got to remember this dynamic is in essence a preview of what I would do if I divide it actually. Right. And this right now is showing two subdivision levels. So if I keep going up three, four, this is now showing this is what this model would look like at level four. Um, I'm going to hide the mask with control H. And one thing that you guys may, may know, you may not know, is right now this is kind of just a viewing of the noise, right? It's not applied to the mesh at, at, at all right now, okay? So, but if I really want to see what this is going to look like applied, all you have to do is render. Okay, so right now look at this more as like, like a bump, Okay, mm -hmm. and then when you render, it's more like a displacement. So it's going to give you what displacement would happen. So if we went back into this right now, I'm not really the strength. Is it? let's let's get create well. And let's not get that. Let's not get it's too crazy. It's too well, crazy. Let's not get Joseph crazy. Let's go. Let's go about there. The, I'm I'm going to go. I'm going to go a little crazy, right? So you can see these are pushing out more, and you can see the silhouette's not really changing at all, right? Even if I did this with dynamic off, and I rendered. What we're wanting to do is showing you what this would look like. So this is a good way to kind of get a gauge. And then now if I want, I'm ready to apply it, this is where now, instead of using dynamic, I would divide up, right? So I need to get rid of the mask. I still have a mask on the guy, okay? And divide up, right? So now I've got divisions here happening. So now I'm back at that 4 million. And I can do it again, that mask lasso, oh, alt key, boom, blur it even, right, a little bit. And now down here, you guys can apply the actual noise, right? So now when I hit this apply, it's going to apply this to the model now. And now I've got that noise. And you still got your subdivisions. Yes. And then now I can walk down and walk up again another benefit of why i don't stick in the dynamesh mode like for an entire model not that that's wrong per se there are people that do this right so me i'm more of a i'm going to take advantage of subdivision levels for sure okay did that answer your question sahid yes uh so you can as far as noise texturing, so here, let's undo this back. I'm, I'm going through my undos right now. Okay, let's get back to this. Okay, I told you. How do I fix my sculpts? How do you fix your sculpts? Undo. All right, so <laughs> there are three types of noises in surface noise. So number one is this graph, right? So if I wanted something that kind of looks like broken up concrete, this is a great way to make some kind of like broken concrete and they can change the scale so here i want to i'm going to go the other way a little bit like that right so then i can change the scale smaller and then this graph is changing like how this will look right so you, this is one noise per se, in essence right you can also add an image which unfortunately i don't have an image on this computer right here in the alpha but if <laughs> I don't know, we can add this, I guess, right? And then this is an image that's being used in here, right? And then now I can mix these, right? So you can add an image here, or you can use this plugin um, here, and now it's popping over my other monitor, right? And you can add things through here. So I can say hex tile, say okay, and add it, it moved me over to the 4K display. Okay, so now this, let me, hold on, I, it popped over my 4K monitor, sorry. Okay, so now this, right, it's very faint right now, but you can kind of see the pattern right there, right? So if I come in here and edit this, let's, let's up this a little bit, and now you'll really see the pattern. 
Okay, and then I can play with this scaling. So this is this is adjusting. This slider is adjusting the noise plugin. Okay, and then this slider is adjusting the noise here. And right now they're mixing with this slider. So I can even tell it to mix and say do maximum. So now only this part is getting this noise, or I can do min and do the opposite, right? And now this noise is only being applied in here. So look at these as two kind of grayscale maps sitting on top of each other making a noise, right? And as far as angles and rotations, these two, you can see I can adjust my angle. I can play with my offsets. So these sliders right here, and you can play with your scaling. Right, so these sliders down here will allow you to rotate and move things. So angles of rotation. So see, I'm rotating. Okay, and then it's going to move this one and this plugin. The image, however, is not. You're not going to be able to rotate your image or anything like that. Okay. All right. So there you go. Does that answer that question? Did I did I do a good job, Captain Dressed? Yes, I'm typing. Okay. in the chats. All right. So are you ready? We're going to throw it back to you now. I'm ready. I'm ready. I got a few more things. A few yeah. more things. We're throwing it back to dress. Throw it back to dress. All right. So as Paul's going, I you know messed with these wings a little bit more, added some more coloring there using that same kind of gradient process. Also, these are, um, you know, I had them as that Dynamesh. I you know, had them as a smooth subdivisions and Dynamesh. And then, of course, as Paul mentioned, you can go back and forth between all these methods. So I went back into Sculptors Pro and started adding some of those like ribs to the different shapes there and just kind of stylize them a little bit more there. Now, in addition to this, um, Paul was talking about importing in files from uh, SC1 files from Sculptress. Uh, you can also import other files into uh, ZBrush Core as well. So it's another thing you can't do inside of Mini. So if I come up here and click the import button, um, I just have a OBJ file that I'm just gonna load in here. And this was actually created in the professional version of ZBrush using the uh, cloth dynamics inside of ZBrush 2021. And so I just brought in this kind of little blanket here. So coming across and kind of sticking to the theme as I have a dragon here, he's got those wings, um, and then he has a blanket. I need to actually import that in one more time. There we go. And so now I can take this, and then we're gonna reset my part there. And we're gonna kind of position this into our scene. I also switch between mouse, you're probably my mouse clicking right now, and tablet as I do oh, things like this. I click, 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 click. Why? <laughs> Why do you switch? I don't know, I just now? always do. I always do. Don't do it. And so you can definitely take you know, any imported geometry, other mesh data, and import it into ZBrush Core 2021 as well. And this will allow you to you know, manipulate these. I can now use that functionality of that dynamic option on this surface. So I can see what it's gonna look like with that smooth subdivisions. I can turn that up and down. I can then also switch to say the micro poly option here and then go in here and choose a different micro poly and kind of see what that looks like. So this is you know quite fun just coming through and just trying to try different things out. And then once again, since this is a preview with this dynamic, I can now come in and use say that move brush, kind of move things around, may wanna have it so it's kind of going into his hand some here. I can smooth this out. But you can kind of play with the forms too and it's gonna keep that micro poly right on it. So it's really handy. Even with data that isn't inside a ZBrush, you can pretty much use it on any data. It's just the polygon count is the only thing you're really going to uh, need to be aware of when you're using the micro poly because you gotta remember that. A blanket or a Kleenex for being sad? Which one is it? Well, you know, I didn't give him a tear, so I'm going to go oh, with the... Uh, he doesn't have a runny nose. He, it's just his blanket. It goes with his little uh, right. version of himself here. Okay. So that's what he's got going on. And then we can, you know, once again, go back to the main model, too. So I have both of these meshes here. I can switch between these quickly, just holding Alt and clicking. And this is going to allow me to go back to my original mesh. And then I can use the move brush out symmetry to kind of get his hands where I need to be. Now, if I did the zero mesher process, I could have got these a little lower resolution too. And with ZBrush Core 2, it often helps sometimes just to kind of re-sculpt stuff, or with Sculptors Pro rather, 
And so you can actually come in and change the shape of things. Inflates, moves. And modify that as little as well too. So you have a lot of freedom with your meshes as you do this. So now he's kind of got this going on and some sort of random holding there. And then with the blanket, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply that. So we're gonna take this micro poly and turn it into- Wait, can you go back geometry? real quick? Wait, wait, I'm gonna rewind you a little bit again. Okay. okay. So someone's asking, can you scale micro polys? Can you show them the scale slider real quick? Yes, so there is a scale option too, and you can adjust this and it'll change the offset. So here, actually, let me go we'll grab this. Oh, handy dandy cylinder, always useful. Cylinder. Always useful. So turn dynamic on, it's gonna give you that smooth subdivision by default. And then if you turn down to zero, you're just gonna get the pure unsubdivided subdivided version. Um, and then I can go into micro poly and start choosing different one of these. And I can start going through these and changing them. And you're gonna see it's replacing each of those polys with that micro poly. And you can see all the different variations on this. Now, if I have one of these that's pretty extreme like this, you can also adjust the scale. And this is gonna determine the size and kind of like the Z data, so the height of it as you scale it in and out. And if you crank this all the way up, you're gonna be able to get you know pretty crazy effects like this too. So if you're making some crazy collars or different kind of things, you can crank it up really high and it'll give you these kind of weird kind of abstract shapes. So you can definitely change the scale right here with that micro poly as well. And once again, this is all live. So as I deform this, you're gonna see this micro poly is gonna go with it. So it's really fun to play and experiment with different things and just use it to generate different shapes. You can smooth it out, play with the different functionality and then just cycle through the different micro polys. So there's ones in here for like scales and stuff we were talking about earlier, wicker baskets, maybe you wanna make one of those. Got some different grids. So that's, that's a pretty crazy shape there. And then we can adjust the scale on that too and make it you know, just a cage. We're gonna go all the way up to where it's like this huge voxel voxel shape. It's a new new term there too, voxel yeah. voxel. And then let me, cause he's thrown in, he meant the actual, well, Joseph's showing you can scale, but the it's micro polys dependent upon the polygons. So the more polygons you have, that's also gonna change the scale. Yeah, well. so this that's one, yeah. Dynamic. Yeah, and you can do that with the dynamic too. So you can see this is the pattern I've got here. And if I turn it off, this is my apology. And then as I start subdividing this up with the smooth subdivision here or clicking divide, it's gonna add more resolution and that's gonna change the size of that micro poly. So you can see as I add more of this, it's gonna change Yeah, it. I think he's maybe looking more for, I, I would recommend you trying nano mesh instead um, because nano mesh will have a lot more controls and ability to do than micro poly does. So I would, I would recommend that as well to look into that. And micro poly is not an upgrade to nano mesh. Um, micro poly is just in essence a revisit of micro mesh, but we redid the code and it also has welding built into it. And it was obviously meant for when we did the dynamics. So, okay, back to, back to your, uh, back to your. Uh, back to my, back to my. Back, back to, I was gonna say Kleenex, but it's not, it's a blanket. So back to it's your a blanket. blanket. We've gone to the blanket now. <laughs> so add some more gradients there kind of fleshing out that as well. And then final thing uh, that uh, I wanna mention that ZBrush Core has, uh, especially if you're coming from Mini, is you also have the ability to use the ZBrush to Keyshot bridge. So I can take any model version here. Um, so here's one I did, just a little more fleshed out one with his hands looking a little bit better. And if I come up to the render palette here and go to external renderer, uh, you have the option to activate Keyshot. And so what this option is going to do inside of ZBrush Core here, is if you normally come up here and just click the BPR button, you're gonna be able to render inside of ZBrush Core using the best preview render. So you can see this is what I get with that. I come over here and adjust the lighting on this to change that up and change different principles and I can render directly inside of Core. Um, but if I wanna use Keyshot to render, we also have a bridge that will take your files from ZBrush Core or even the professional version of ZBrush and send them directly to Keyshot. So I can to activate that and go to the render palette up here activate the key shot option here. This is gonna look at your model. And then as I click BPR here, it's gonna take this and it's gonna send it right to key shot. So this is now transferred to key shot. Let me hop over to key shot. And here we have the model that has been sent 
directly into Keyshot here. So it transferred all my different subtools that I had. In Keyshot now, I can apply you know, different materials to this. So I'm gonna take this, say, paint. Let's see, which one do I want? Do I want plastic or paint? We'll just do paint. Uh, no, actually, we'll do plastic. So you have a whole library of different materials you can apply to your models here. Now, I had that vertex coloring on my mesh inside of ZBrush. I wanna keep that. So to do this, I can come over and drag a material holding down the Alt key, and then it'll go right to the model there, and that will retain that color information. I can also edit the graph for this model now, and if I want the material, which is gonna be sent by default with that shader that I had inside of ZBrush, so it was sent with the skin shader and also the RGB coloring. If I just want the RGB coloring, I can come through here and add a vertex color option here. Let me find out where my thing is. It's at a vertex color node, and then I can add that to the diffuse instead of the texture map one, and I can delete this. And this is now just going to give me the pure vertex coloring. And so now my dinosaur, or my dragon here has that. And then I can copy this material and then apply it to the rest of the model here. So I'm just coming through and apply like so. And then for the eyes, so he's got the eyes here and the eyes here. I want a hard, shiny plastic. For that one, I don't really want to retain the color. I just want to apply it. So I'm going to grab that hard, shiny plastic and apply it to those different areas there. And then now I'll just let it sit here for a minute and render. And as it's doing that, let me see if I can find you a final image here. But this allows you to kind of sculpt inside of ZBrush Core and then so basically we went through the whole process of started in Mini, sculpted to a point inside of Mini, transferred it over to ZBrush Core, using those new features inside of ZBrush Core, that new dynamic, the new Z remesh options, and then also the micro poly. And then if you had original sculptures files, you could brought those in as well. And then from there, we used the other features and then sent it directly to render inside of Keyshot here. And then after that's all kind of completed. You've got your you know, final dragon image here. All nice and pretty. Mm, so pretty. And pretty. So that's all I got, Paul. What all else right. we got? Well, what we got is when is ZBrush Core 2021 obviously coming out, right? So Kyle, go ahead, cue it up for me. Drum roll. Drum roll. So Core is going to be available tomorrow. So for those of you that already have ZBrush Core, this is a free upgrade for you. So you'll be able to get uh, ZBrush Core 2021 right now. For those of you maybe that have been watching the stream and have been maybe ZBrush Mini Core Mini users, and you, now you're like, oh, I'm really liking what's in Core. Um, there are two ways that you can get into Core. So you can do a subscription for $9.95 per month, or you can just join the Perpetual family and get it for $179.95. And then we haven't charged an upgrades for upgrades in 20 plus years. I can't say that's going to go on forever. I have no idea. But you have two ways now to get into core for you, right? So this is something that we'll be releasing tomorrow. And again, it'll be a free upgrade. If you guys decide to even purchase core today, you're going to get 2020. But tomorrow, you'll be able to upgrade to 2021. So even if you want to purchase today right now and you've liked what Joseph and I were showing at Core, by all means, jump in there, join the Core family. Or if you just want to go for it and go straight to full straight ZBrush, to full, yeah. go for it as well if you want to. Uh, so that's pretty much all we have for today's stream, showing you guys what's new in ZBrush Core 2021. Again, that will be available tomorrow. So keep an eye on all of our social media and our websites. And then for those, again, that already have ZBrush Core, you're just going to log into your account on your My Licenses page. So again, that's pixelogic.com slash My Licenses, right? And again, you have two ways to get into Core with either a subscription-based $9.95 or perpetual license that's $179.95. So that $9.95 is per month. So it's $9.95 per month. And then for the, do you want to hit on the features again that are now included yeah. inside of ZBrush Core 2021? Absolutely. So again, let's recap kind of what Joseph and I just said. Rewind so it. Undo it. I don't do undo, the sound undo, effects undo, as undo. well as, as Paul. <laughs> okay. So there are some additions, obviously. Number one, Z Remesher is being added to ZBrush Core. So it's only a two button solution. So it'll be default of what Z, Z Remesher would do in full version and then a half button. We've added dynamic subdivs. 
with also the ability to have micro poly. So we've added both of those abilities mm -hmm. to you guys as well. We've added the ability to load in any sculptress files for you. And then we've also added with that, the ability in core now will have to load the 3D GIFs and the, 3D the image 3D files. Image yep. 3D files. GIF or GIF and PNG GIFs files. or GIFs. Yep. Yep. Not only that, but all the speed improvements and all the things that we've done in the guts of ZBrush, especially when we launched ZBrush 2021, that's all going in core as well. Yep. So you're not just getting necessarily just these features. We've worked really hard to try and push the elements here and try to improve the speeds and make it even... ZBrush, and I know for a lot of tests we've done, we're getting like on a lot of cases extremely faster workflows. A lot faster between on yeah, our benchmarks, 2020 so, to 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're getting all that additions um, as well. Uh, am I missing something? Oh well, and this is just because Daisuke is here. Solo mode with single click is also being added in the preference. <laughs> so that's a big one. I know my man, my man Daisuke was in there. Yeah, okay. he's been wanting that one so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm missing something. And am I did I for, did I go blank? Hold on, let me double check because I think I got everything. I think you got everything. Dynamic, micro poly, Z remesher, right? The ability to load images our image 3D with GIFs and PNGs, and the ability to load our sculptress files that you might have made within Sculptress. Yep. All right, and then by the way, the the on top of that ZBrush, the key shot that Joseph was using, if that's the first time you guys have seen that, the one thing you want to know is Joseph was using a special edition of key shot was made specifically for you, our ZBrush users, right? And it come and it comes with a bridge, which one button solution sends everything over to key shot. It'll send material. It'll send everything you see with inside of ZBrush Core will all go over, including even Z spheres will go over. Okay. Um, the one thing to know about that, there's a pro version of Keyshot and an HD version of Zebra uh, Keyshot. So the pro version with the bridge is about $550. I'm rounding up real quick. And then the HD version with the bridge is $350. So to give you guys an idea, we've worked with Luxion to make this special edition with you guys, where usually pro version of Keyshot is $2,000 and HD version is $1,000. So you guys are getting like 75% off Keyshot mm -hmm. with that deal too. So because Joseph showed it and I saw it come up somewhere in the chat. So I just want to reiterate that as well. And I would say the difference between HD and pro for the key shot, I would say if you are an artist that you really like, like Joseph, really likes to mess with things and edit things and mess with the materials and, H and the lighting, go pro. If you're someone I just want quick, simple, boom, boom, go the HD level, okay? Um, so yeah, I'll give a link right now. Joseph, I'm going to get a link there asking. Yeah, for, yeah let me, got it, got it, got let it. Me, do you have it or do you mean to get it? I can get it. All right, Joseph. You keep talking. I'll, I'll, I'll find it. Joseph's my uh, my booth babe for the rest of the stream. So he'll put a link in the chat for you so you can get more information on what I just said there. Okay. So again, the and someone was asking these, whenever you guys see these clubhouse streams as well, they're kind of a stream where it's going to be two probably people streaming at the same time inside of ZBrush, i.e. Joseph and I were both going back and forth, making something at the same time inside of ZBrush. And so, and obviously when Joseph and I are together, we do craziness. It always happens. It can never mm -hmm. just be normal. I'm not normal by that all means. So, so thanks. I'm on a roll. Thank you. So, <laughs> so as far as building a, a character from the stream, there's a lot. Uh, I don't know if you've been to our channel. The, obviously, you're watching this right now. Uh, you're on YouTube, so all those are being saved. So this is this is part of our ZBrush Live. So there are a lot of videos of people building something from beginning to end. I myself did a whole set of streams building a Gremlin from the beginning to the end of the Gremlin, and then showing different techniques and features along the way. But like. Every artist has done that. Um, Ashley Adams does that in almost every one of her streams. Shane Olson does it. Every single one of our streamers that are streaming with us do a project like that. So I would recommend going on your YouTube and our playlist and looking at that playlist through the actual streams. Okay. So to get the uh, DiceK is uh, putting it in there for you right now as a link. Right? Yeah, and then on there too. Yeah. got the links in there. Okay. Oh, Joseph, chairs and couches. And that's right up Joseph's alley. 
He likes I did. I had done a few chairs. You <laughs> have a you have a a stream that you did at one of the cigars with a chair. Yeah, that was a long time ago. We'd have to there's, try. And there's find new it. ways I'd do it now, though. So. Yeah. What I would recommend, by the way, everybody, a great way. Obviously, when we're done this stream, you don't have this ability to communicate with us like this real fast, but you do. What I would recommend um, in ZBrush Central, I'm going to put my ZBrush Central name here. If you guys just do go to ZBrush Central, if you have a question, make a post and then just put this here, Pixel Paul, and I'll get an email. Joseph, I don't know if you want to share yours. So there's my ZBrush Central name. So if you guys like post something on ZBrush Central, like a question or something, if you put at Pixel Paul, I'll get an email. And then that way I can for sure make sure I go to your post on ZBrush Central and see your questions, your answer. And maybe I can direct you to other videos through there. It's just will be easier. Okay. They like the creature behind you, dress. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, Damien's standard brush creator right there. It's hit one of his. Damien Cantalay. And then a bunch of mouths. Uh, mm, tangent question, no. If you're using the move tangent, if the move topological, you would have to just turn that off. So if you're using move brush with the one key, that'll be fine. But if you're using move topological and put it at one, that's built in. So you'd have to just switch to the move brush. OK, well, I'm done. Joseph, do you have any last parting words for the group? No, here? thank you all for tuning out and uh, look forward to the release tomorrow for the upgrade for ZBrush Core. So ZBrush Core 2021. And if, once again, as Paul mentioned, if you already have a license to ZBrush Core, it is a free upgrade. So make sure you check, head over to ZBrush Central and get the information on that when it goes live tomorrow. And thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, it was a, another fun stream. I had my fun stream last night with Raphael Grissetti, and now I even had more fun with Joseph Dressed. <laughs> all right. So bye, everybody. Thank you all.